Hello and welcome to Module 2 of DJing with Ableton Live. In this module we'll be showing you how to set up tracks and effects for DJing. We're going to begin by opening the Module 2 session file that you downloaded from the Sonic Academy website. Now I'm going to set up my first audio track with some effects that I can use while DJing. You can add as many effects as you like to each track, but try and think about ones that will work best within your set. We can access the audio effects within Live by clicking on the second button down on the left hand side. We can now see three subfolders, Instruments, MIDI Effects and Audio Effects. We're going to use the Audio Effects folder. I can open this by simply clicking the small triangle. To add any effect to the audio track, I simply click on it and drag it onto the track. I'm going to add an EQ effect by simply clicking, dragging and dropping. I'm also going to add an Auto Filter. We can now see the effects that we've added to this track in the Effects window. The EQ effect is one of the standard functions within a DJ mixer, so we're trying to emulate the kind of control that traditional DJs have, but in digital form. In our EQ effect, we can see three different controllers. These allow us to cut or boost three different frequency ranges within the music. I'm going to play back one of our tunes and hear how this affects the sound. I'm going to start by removing the low frequencies. Next, the mid frequencies. And finally, the high frequencies. Our next effect, the auto filter, allows us to smoothly remove various sections of the frequency range. We can do this by simply clicking on the yellow ball and dragging up and down. Let's play our tune back and hear how that sounds. Below this filter window we have a number of different filter settings that we can access. This first one is a low pass filter. This means it allows the low sounds to pass first. Next to that is a high pass filter and this allows the high sounds to pass through first. We can now duplicate these tracks to give us a number of different tracks to mix with within our session. Basically like having a number of different turntables. We do this by simply right clicking or control clicking on a Mac on the audio track and selecting duplicate. Next we can add some effects to the master track. This will allow us to manipulate the overall sound coming out of the program. First I'm going to select an auto filter. The auto filter will work in exactly the same way as the filters we've positioned on the individual audio tracks. Next I'm going to place a delay effect by dragging and dropping. In the delay effect we have two basic controls. We have dry and wet and feedback. Dry and wet basically allows us to control the amount of the sound that's being affected. If our control is set at 0%, then none of the affected sound will be heard. 
we can then turn that up to add the desired amount of delay to the sound. Let's play our tune back and see what that sounds like. Next we have the feedback control. This allows us to set up how long the delay will continue to be heard after the original sound has passed through the effect. Let's play that back and see how it sounds. Next I'm going to add a flanger effect. The flanger is basically a very short delay which adds a jet plane like sweeping effect to the sound. Here you can see a dry wet control the same as we have on the delay. Let's play our tune back and see how that's affecting the sound. We can now use the dry wet control to add the desired amount of effect to the sound. Now that we've made some significant changes to our session, it's a good point to save our work. We do this by selecting File and Save Live Set. So in this module, we've had a look at how to prepare our session for DJing using additional tracks and effects. In the next module, we'll be showing you how to set up your MIDI controller for live performance.